Well, good morning. Welcome to the live stream of the Rick Helps Real Estate Show. And man, I hope the audio's working today. <laughs> yesterday, I'm doing the show yesterday morning. I didn't leave the video up for obvious reasons. I redid another one. And over on what I'm looking at on my screen on the right-hand side, it's like, Rick, you sound like a chipmunk. Audio's bad. It's just a, just a long string. <laughs> and I have this thing called Stream Deck. I'm going to show it to you here. Um, pick it up. Now watch me break something when I do this here. So this controls everything that I'm, that I'm doing when I switch over from one scene to another to show you the data. And I'm looking at that and I'm looking at the microphone and I'm looking at the data. And Esther and Jimmy said, we can hear you good. Love the confirmation. And for the life of me, I couldn't figure out what was going on. So I quickly switched over to another uh, streaming service and everything worked fine. When I say quickly, I mean, I'm clicking like a freaking madman. And uh, so I get back in to try and diagnose the problem yesterday. And I know you're probably tired of hearing this techie stuff you hear for the real estate numbers. Hang in there. Hit the like button, too. Uh, I don't know what happened. I really didn't change anything. I just went in and kind of did some tests yesterday and everything worked. So there was something wrong between the software and YouTube, where by the time it got to YouTube, it just screwed it all up. So <laughs> it was, you know, one of the things that make you go, hmm. So thinking of things that make you go, hmm, everybody was really hanging on Chairman Powell's word yesterday. And we're going to talk about the effects and what he said and why it even matters. And maybe it doesn't. But here's where we're at today. We have 6,700 listings on the market. Pretty darn low, but we're digging out. You can see the blue line here. And I know some people don't like my charts. But the blue line here shows that inventory is starting to come back up again, just like last year. So we know where we're headed. We're headed back up into this territory over here. And then we're going to go down for Christmas. That's a given. So that's uh, that's what's happening around here. And it simply just means that we're slowing down uh, for the holidays. Um, get into January, we will look for trends to see if inventory is going to come up or if it's going to go down or what the heck's happening. Um, I get a lot of my data from the Cromford Report, as you know. And I found out that they... Uh, Michael Orr, who uh, you know started the Cromford Report, he lives in England, and uh, he was living in Phoenix for a long time, and he, him and his family moved back to England, and they evidently had a huge snowstorm uh, Friday, and they have been without a phone. Let's see, it says yeah, they lost thousands of power lines, so they've been without electricity and internet uh, for most of the week. So he's moved into a place called Walworth Castle, built in. Eight, in 1189 and hopes to be back up running and getting the data out to us this week. But I was kind of wondering why the information was trickling along a little slower. Um, so that's that's that. Uh, let's see, running at altitude, increasing conforming loan limits for 2022 give borrowers more buying power. Would you say 2022 could be as busy as 2021? Uh, the first half is looking like it. It's looking like it's going to be just as busy. Of course, everybody's hanging their hat on rates. Now, what happened about rates? Well, you know, Janet Yellen is now our Treasury Secretary. She used to be the, you know, the head of the central bank. Now it's Chairman Powell, um, Fred Powell. And he, they give testimony once a quarter to Congress on what they see. Now, he's been saying that in inflation is mostly transitory once we spend fix the supply side issues, then inflation will start coming down. He said that they're going to start tapering their purchases of mortgage-backed securities, which they have, and their treasuries, which they have. And then the market reacts to that. And sometimes a Fed chairman like Greenspan, if he would say something, and if you could even come close to understanding him, then the markets would react and the way things would go. Um, with Chairman Powell, he pretty much tells it like it is, but he has a tendency to change his mind a lot based on the data that he sees. So yesterday he said, I think it's time we stop using the word transitory when it comes to inflation. And the market went, yikes. So he thinks inflation's here to stay. At the same time, in his comments, he said, and I brushed on this just a little bit yesterday, and I'm by no means, I'm not a, I'm not a big uh, Fed expert, but he did say that if this new variant, this COVID variant, causes a slowdown, they are prepared to react and do whatever's necessary to keep the to keep our economy going. Now, what's that mean? Well, what tools do they have? The only tools that they have are to lower rates. So he's kind of putting out there going, 
we anticipate rates going up, we anticipate buying down, but if things get really cloudy out there, we might have to change our mind. So it's a great big guessing game. Nobody really knows. In fact, what we saw the reaction yesterday was, guess what? Rates went down. The market reacted and rates went 3.14 and they were 3.21. So they listened to his testimony that went up and down. And as I said the other day, this month is going to be really rocky and volatile, up, down, up, down. So we don't know. I wouldn't want to be a lender. You know, do I lock? I don't know. I'm going to put them in a straitjacket. Mortgage rates much lower so far this week. They ended the previous week on a hopeful outlook due to the Omicron variant. Now, what do they mean by that hopeful outlook? Well, what they were saying is this, you know, if, whenever there's bad news, rates go down. So in general, rates benefit from news and invest in events that cause investors to seek protection from risk. A fresh dose of risk aversion was served up overnight as Moderna's CEO said he the expected vaccine efficacy to be lower against a new variant. Those headlines sent stock prices and bond yields lower. When bond yields are lower, lipper, lenders are typically able to offer lower mortgage rates, all other things being equal. That's what steers mortgage rates, is the bond market. So the bond market reacts to what Chairman Powell says. They, they react to bad news. When, when there's bad economic news out there, People flock to safety, rates go down. So that's why I've said it looks like rates are going to trend up, but there is always a possibility, a possibility that rates could go down. So we just, all we can do is watch it. And it says here, big swings as COVID squares off against the Fed. It was Omicron versus the Fed today, and bonds had a front row seat in the overnight session. So it's basically saying, uh, <laughs> It said that Powell said the word transitory uh, for inflation and that tapering would need to be accelerated. The latter was a shot across the bow uh, to, at the end of the yield curve. In other words, Chairman Powell kind of threw a comment out there that threw everybody for a loop. So what does that mean? Well, it's not affecting our market or anything here right now at all because everything's relatively staying the same. And you look here, homes over list price are 46%. Now we did rock it around 68 60% over list, but you can see that there's certain price points you get down here, and we're still at over 56% of homes going over list price in the 300 to 400,000 range. Drops to 47 when you go up to the next bracket, and the average price is about $10,000 over list. So that's what's going on. Now, here's an interesting article here. There's a company, and I don't quite understand what their model is here it's a couple of guys i want to come back down to this spot so bear with me but um there's a couple of guys they, they look like twins but i i guess they're not uh they're out of uh oh i'll have to read it and find it you know i know where this picture was taken too and i know the photographers <laughs> that's where all realtors go they like this background up there uh dc ranch so anyway they're a company um they said interested home flippers come to flip OS with a property they'd like to renovate. They analyze the property and they make the flipper an offer to buy the house once it's ready to be rented out or sold. They generate a scope of work so the renovators know exactly what needs what fixes need to be made before they flip it. So if I understand it right, let's say I'm a flipper and I'm looking at a house, they analyze it and they go, okay, Rick, um, we recommend that you do the following um, renovations, and when you're done, it's going to be worth $450,000. So we're going to go ahead and give you $450,000 right now. Great. So the flippers go in, their margin is slightly lower, but their risk is gone, and these guys have already pre-purchased it. They tell them, here's our list of contractors. Here's the number of, you know, the types of renovations that we recommend you do. Here's what it's going to cost you. Go. So they seem to be a company that's removing risk, but how do they make money? That's what I don't get. It says that they help renovators cycle through the flipping process quicker than before by taking the sales process off their plate. Also, by securing a buyer early, flippers can work with narrower margins. Confidently, they will already know what sale price to expect. Okay, so we have another flipper coming in, and uh, um, they're going to help a guy renovate the house. They're going to buy it, and then they're going to have to turn around and buy it. I don't see how this is going to make them money, especially if prices level off at all in the future. And they got a big injection of price. 
They, they raised $136 million to do its flip iOS buyer platform. Now, are they going to compete with other iBuyers like Open Door and OfferPad? Well, actually, in the article, they said, no, we may partner with them and help them. So I don't know. That's uh, There's just crazy things that come up when the market gets silly. So we're going to watch that. Now it's time for predictions for 2022. Realtor.com, here we go. Now, let me preface this. They only got one thing right in predict predicting 2021. That's why I don't try to predict, predict the year. They said that interest rates would probably edge up to about 3.4%. And they got up to about 3.29. So they're close. Um, and uh, Peyton here says, how can a flipper make any money? Well, they're making money now. It's uh, uh, you, you start with the retail price and you work backwards and then that's your offer that you offer people. So housing forecast 2022 with Realtor.com. Home prices will stay high, but price growth will continue slowing. That wasn't too hard to figure out. Not many more homes are expected to go up for sale. There's your inventory problem. They're saying... Further, it won't be easy for first-time home buyers. Wow, that took a team of economists to figure that up. Mortgage rates will continue ticking up. I don't know. We'll see. It, it could go either way. We'll see. All depends on how well the economy does. Rents will keep shooting up higher than home prices. This will go until we end up in an overbuilt situation. So we'll have to see what happens there. And that's about as much as they gave us. They didn't even dip their toes into predicting the price increases. So not that I can see. Um, it says rental prices have been soaring. Tenants are expected to, aren't expected aren't expected to get any relief. Prices have surged and are expected to continue rising by 7% in 2022. Now, it's gone up like 14% this year. So we'll see what happens and see what's going. Um, here's what they said here, though. Um, they anticipate mortgage rates will rise an average 3.3%, hitting around 3.6 by the end of 2022. That's up from a low of 2.65. That doesn't sound like much, but the hike adds up. So I'm scrolling and I don't see a growth prediction. Now, Case Schiller came out, and this is October numbers, and they're basically saying that Phoenix led the pack again. Phoenix, Tampa, and Miami reported the highest year-over-year -year gains among the 20 cities. Phoenix led the way with a 33.1% year-over-year price increase, followed by Tampa, Miami. So um, we are leading the country in price growth. Um, is that good or that's bad? Well, if you're, you're a seller, that's great news. Uh, if you're a buyer, you're just banging your head against the wall. So it's going to be interesting. So there's a lot of things hanging out for 2022. A lot of it has to do with the strength of the economy. That will determine rates. There's all kinds of other airplanes flying around that uh, could cause some noise out there. So we just continue to watch it here. Um, we look and see, and what I look for is a rise in inventory. And the same things that we saw in 2006, where inventory started going up, sales started going down. That's the canary in the coal mine, and that's what we keep looking for here. And if it continues to strengthen, if inventory stays low, to answer uh, running at altitude's question for 2022, that's a recipe for higher prices the rest of the year. So that has to change. So we'll keep watching here. I hope everybody has a great Wednesday. And thank you for letting me know that the sound worked. See you tomorrow. Mm -hmm.